11 years after the Prophet Sallallahu migration to the city of Medina, the companions were now at the cusp of the most difficult tragedy they had ever experienced and would ever live to experience, a tragedy that would dwarf all other previous catastrophes. It was the darkest day in human history, the day of the death of humanity's Prophet and Saviour, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He had paid back his debts, he delivered his farewell sermon, he taken one final glance at his companions from behind a curtain as they stood in prayer, and the companions were overjoyed. They hoped that the horrific thought of losing the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had departed. They didn't know that this was to be their very final glance at the beautiful and radiant face of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam during this lifetime, for he would not live to witness the next prayer. He then drew the curtain and he went to place his head now on the chest of our mother Aisha. And the pangs of death began to escalate and eventually he lost his ability to move. And finally, after much suffering, he raised his head and pointed towards the ceiling of his home and he said, O oh Allah with the highest companion, O oh Allah with the highest companion. And our mother Aisha understood that at that moment he was being given the choice by the angel of death between remaining with us as his followers until the day of judgment or dying and going back to Allah. And she said, he was not choosing us. Those were his last words before his request was finally granted. And as the last breath gracefully escaped the Prophet's lips, a hushed stillness descended upon the scene as if the very universe had held its breath in reverence. His hand dropped and his head suddenly became heavy and the angel of death had just claimed the purest soul that he had ever claimed and will ever claim on the Monday 12th of Rabi'ul Awwal in the 11th year of the Hijrah at the age of 63 years old and four days, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam returned to his Lord wa inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. The companion who served the Messenger Alayhi Salatu Wasallam for 10 years, Anas ibn Malik, he said, Lama kan al yawm alladhi dakhala fihi Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam al Madina adaa minha kullu shay. When the Prophet والسلام, entered the city of Medina, everything within it illuminated. However, on the day in which he passed away, everything within the city of Medina darkened. News of the dark catastrophe spread like wildfire within Medina. The companions had temporarily lost all sense of reality, comprehension. What had just occurred was beyond imagination. The masjid erupted with tremendous weeping and shouting. Umar radiallahu anhu stood up and declared, there are, there are some hypocrites out there who claim that the messenger of Allah has died. No, he has not died. He, he's simply gone to Allah. The same way that Prophet Musa, Moses went to Allah for 40 days and he's going to come back and he's going to cut off the hands and the feet of those who say that he passed away. Subhanallah is the nature of human beings at times when huge calamities befall them. And I ask, do you know of a calamity that was greater than this? Do you know of a people who love their leader more than the companions love theirs? Indeed, the companions were paralyzed by grief. The Ummah was on the verge of collapse, in utter sorrow and dismay. The Muslims were at this moment in time in dire need of a Savior who would guide them through this catastrophe and gather their ranks once again. And this Savior would be none other than the companion dearest to the heart of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The companion was Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr had previously asked permission from the Prophet وسلم, to visit his home in the area called Sunh in the upper parts of Medina. But after news reached him of the disaster, he hurriedly returned. And he entered the masjid, the mosque, and he witnessed these huge crowds of companions in a state of shock and weeping and utter crumbling. And he saw Umar addressing the crowds in his way. Abu Bakr didn't utter a word. 
he needed first to verify the news. He passed through the congregation until he reached the door of Aisha's apartment. The silence of the Prophet's room was broken by the gentle entry of Abu Bakr. And he opened the door and his eyes fell upon his guide, upon his teacher, upon his best friend, still as he had never seen him before and covered with a shroud. The news, the dark news was true. The Prophet ﷺ had died. Abu Bakr fell to his knees and he gently uncovered the shroud from the messenger's face and he took one final glance at the most beautiful of creation and there Abu Bakr, he cried over him and his tears mingled with him. Oh, and he kissed him and he said, Bi Abi anta wa ummi, hayyan wa mayitan. May my mother and father be ransomed for you. Beautiful you are when you are alive. And beautiful you are. Beautiful you are in your death. And I swear you shall never taste the bitterness of death ever again. This moment marked the beginning of Abu Bakr's colossal task. Behind the walls of his daughter's apartment were wounded crowds reeling in devastation. Abu Bakr first made his way to Umar and tried to silence him, but failed. <laughs> and as a result, Abu Bakr let him be. And he turned to the devastated crowds and he said to them, أَلَا مَنْ كَانَ يَعْبُدُ مُحَمَّدًا فَإِنَّ مُحَمَّدًا قَدْ مَاتْ وَمَنْ كَانَ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ حَيٌّ لَا يَمُوتْ Whoever of you used to worship Muhammad وسلم, then I am telling you now, Muhammad has just died. But whoever used to worship Allah, then I am telling you, Allah is ever living and he will never die. And then he reminded them of a verse from the Quran, he recited, إِنَّكَ مَيِّتٌ وَإِنَّهُمْ مَيِّتُونَ You, O Messenger of Allah, shall die, and they shall die. And he recited the verse from the Quran, وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُلُ Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is no more than a messenger. And indeed many messengers before him passed away. أَفَإِمْ مَاتَ أَوْ قُتِلًا قَلَبْتُمْ عَلَىٰ أَعْقَابِكُمْ So if he dies or he is killed, Allah says in the Quran, will you then turn back on your heels? وَمَنْ يَنْقَلِبَ عَلَىٰ عَقِبَيْهِ فَلَنْ يَضُرَّ اللَّهَ شَيْئًا وَسَيَجُزِ اللَّهُ الشَّاكِرِينَ Allah says, and whoever turns back on his heels, he will not harm Allah in the least, and Allah will reward those who are grateful. لا إله إلا الله How Allah Almighty inspired Abu Bakr in this moment, with this type of steadfastness and wisdom, and recollection of these evidences, this is the knowledge of Allah and His choosing. The companions had heard these verses many times before, but it was as if it was the first time they had ever heard it. One by one they began to repeat the verses. The entire congregation were now reciting the verses of Abu Bakr. They realized it was true. Omar, he said, I swear by Allah, as soon as I heard Abu Bakr say it, I fell down to the ground. I felt as if my legs were unable to carry me I collapsed when I heard him say it, and only then did I realize that the Prophet ﷺ had really died. During this traumatic episode, Allah Almighty showered upon Abu Bakr phenomenal stability, composure, steadfastness, that he would use to hold together the community of Muslims, which had at this moment plummeted into misery and dismay. Through Iman, through leadership, through years of walking in the footsteps of the Prophet وسلم, Abu Bakr was able to carry a much wounded community on his shoulders and deliver them to the shores of safety. Through this hardship, Allah Almighty had sent a clear message to their companions that the one who leads you during this difficult time is the one who shall lead you after it as well. 